Hey guys, and welcome back to another TTL video. And today we're going to be taking a look at the Intel i9 12900KS. Now, if you didn't know, effectively what Intel have been doing is keeping a lot of the best 12900s and then sending it us. It's a crazy package, but gold, look, it looks like a wafer. It's actually pretty cool. And then you get your normal kind of slip inside, but the 12900KS is speed binned because they run up to 5.5 gigahertz. Yeah, up to 5.5 gigahertz. Now, I have done a significant amount of testing because at the end of the day, it's a ridiculous price. It's very, very expensive and I'll cover that more at the end, but it's 749 pounds on scan at the moment. I have seen them uh, up around and above the 800 pounds mark though. So uh, it's exactly the same other than that as the original 12900K. It's just got that increased boost. Now I did notice that uh, my 5.5 gigahertz was flicking up on two cores. It was actually uh, numbered as core four and five that I was getting my 5.5 to. Now uh, they do use an awful lot of power but it obviously depends on the load that you end up putting on uh, but the the load was considerable now because the load is considerable that also means that the cooling is and has been deafening throughout so I use a H150i now this is the static test rig literally we've used the same uh, test rig for all of the 12th gen processors we would actually swap the motherboard out and use exactly the say, other kit if we were going to do an AMD review which I will have coming up shortly um, and that's a H150i from Corsair that I have 3000 RPM Noctua fans on to be able to test this and overclock it, but even just the stock tests, I was running those Noctua fans at maximum. So these temperatures that you can see were at maximum chat. Now I did take some uh, video footage of me putting the load on as well, so you can see quite how quickly the uh, temperatures go from nothing to very, very hot you're in the 80s and 90s almost instantly and then you get the odd core flick up depending on what's going on uh, with the load tester so all load tests go through different stages and applying different loads onto it uh, the worst one in reality if you were to watch the temperatures was blender because blender uses a lot of avx as well and that absolutely batters the process so you can pretty much feel the heat pouring out the top even with the fans on a hundred percent also the water temperature got up to 32 degrees which doesn't sound like a lot but it normally sits at 27 28 on a bad day so for that much heat to be getting put into that water is actually nuts and i did have the pump on extreme i could not turn it up anymore now we have done uh, several benchmarks which I will uh, flick through and show you because we do the bent, uh, sorry, blender, uh, the usual cine benches, all the usual stuff that you will see. It did benefit quite well uh, when you put it into games though because of that increased clock speed. But a lot of games now are multi-threaded and that means when you do go in you're not actually getting the 5.5 but we did find that even with the load maxed out across all of the cores, our P cores were sitting consistently, if you look again at the B-roll, at 5.2 gigahertz. So even the all core load is incredibly healthy. Now, when you uh, look at the all core load and all stuff like that, it, it then made me think, well, they've clearly just speed bin these to the perfect point that uh, you get a couple of cores that will do 5.5, but you're getting a consistent 5.2. Now that was what my manual overclocks were kind of kicking into with my original 12900K review. Now you do need to remember Silicon Lottery because I actually do have a retail processor that um, uh, I have that actually performs better than my review sample that they got. Now they're all retail, but what I mean is it was a purchase. Uh, came from an e-tailer and that actually performs 
better than the one that I got originally for my review because you are always going to get what we call the silicon lottery where some processors work better than others and that's where these come from because they pick out the good ones and then they sell them to you for a higher price. That's what they do throughout the range though if you understand how they make the silicon and how it all gets pieced together but we'll cover that again in a little bit more uh, time. So I ended up overclocking uh, mine so that the first four cores with load on would uh, load up to 5.5. If you load up four or more, they uh, then would flip to 5.4. So if you run a big, heavy, multi-threaded benchmark, all the cores, or the P cores, would run at 5.4, and I fixed the E cores to 4.1. Now, if you did this, I actually managed to uh, lower the temperatures because I was taming the volts manually, which was a bit nuts. And this is something, again, I'll talk to you at the end about. Uh, I ended up running uh, 1.275 volts fixed across all the cores, and it actually brought my temperatures down, uh, for the most part, anyway. You could still get them to 100 degrees, but they were a little bit more um, attainable. And we run the benchmarks through, and they were all stable throughout with those volts and uh, those clocks as well. So we effectively ended up with um, a peak boost of being 5.4, and during the benchmarks, they did all sit at 5.4 consistent as well. None of this messing around. I made sure the power requirements were all being uh, tamed there. If I did turn the volts down, I did actually start to get clock speeds moving around, and this is something I would stress to everyone at home. If you're going to be buying one of these and then trying to overclock it, watch the clock speeds under load, because if the load is at 100% and your clock speeds start to go down, you've either got a power problem, a voltage problem, or a cooling problem. Uh, so, 5.4 for an all-core overclock, with four cores being able to be utilised at 5.5, uh, which is where some games will sit into, but a lot of games now do grab multiple cores at once, so that's going to depend on uh, your usage at home. But for stressful things like Blender and stuff, it, it did very, very well, as you'll see with the graphs that have been appearing. Now, the £749 price, it is nuts because it is a 12900K, but with more ability. Uh, but not just locked to the ability they sell you it at, because it's clearly got headroom for other things as well, as I have found with this one. Now, I do think it's an awful, awful lot of money, like crazy amount of money, and I'm not going to defend them, but there was a very well-known e-tailer in the UK, Overclockers, and they used to do this for you. What they would do is they would have their trays of processors, and 8-pack would go through them, speed binning them, and he would tell you what clock he managed to get it, get it at, the voltages, and what cooling he used. And then they used to sell it to you for a fairly hefty price premium. So effectively, what Intel are doing is a more wide stream, mainstream approach at it, and then charging you a premium for it still. Now, quicker binned processors, quicker performing processors are always gonna cost more, but at the end of the day, this is one of the kind of like mid-range processors, not like one of the old crazy 2011 X series processors. So it's, there's, there's two ways you can think about it. Yeah, we can very easily ha um, hate on Intel, but it isn't something that's new to the market and it is something that other companies have done for you anyway. I'm of the old school. I can remember researching uh, batch numbers because the E6600, if you got a, you, what you found out was a golden batch, you'd go and buy them and those batches, as soon as the retailers found out about it, they would be 50 or a hundred pound more because they knew they were overclocking batches. It's not new, it's just prices because of inflation and all of that sort of crazy global market malarkey, prices are just going up and up and up. So if you've got a 12900K, do I think you should be buying a 12900KS? Well, I don't think I would, but if you were crazy, like, enthusiast, then it's your money. Um, but I know like, lots of the AMD people are going to be hating on it, and then a lot of the Intel people are going to be defending it. But at the end of the day, it is an immensely fast processor, which is probably going to be a limited run, and is ridiculously expensive. But also quite difficult to live with. Forget about the price. 
I'm telling you now, if you buy one of these, you need dedicated water cooling. And you can't half arse it either. You have to invest and build it properly with best practice because they get incredibly hot. I really should have tested on full water in reality, but the reason why I didn't is because I would not have been able to have um, like compared it to anything else. But in hindsight, having to run the fans at 100% isn't exactly comparable to the way I would have tested the, um, the i5 or the i7 anyway. So, does it draw a lot of power? Yes. Does it cost a lot of money? Whoa, hell yes. Does it get very hot? Very, 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 very yes. Is it worth buying? That's really going to come down to you. It's an awful lot of money in reality, but if you wanted to say that you had a 5.5 gigahertz uh, 12900, then the KS may be the easiest way to get there. It's really just going to depend on your own pocket and what you want to be spending. I don't think, though, that short of ego boasting, uh, like bragging rights, that you're going to enjoy a game any better with a 12900KS. But if you're an overcocker and literally are buying and building rigs to see how much you can tune and what you can do with systems, thanks for my phone ringing, then who knows? So the phone call completely interrupted my flow, but I think the points are there. Very expensive, very hot. For a 12900KS, it's actually very quick as well. We're just gonna have to make peace with the amount of cooling that is required and uh, also how much it's going to empty a bank balance for the privilege. For now at least though, this is the tiniest one. If you have enjoyed this review, please like, subscribe, comment, and we're trying different uh, uh, desserts at the end. So today we're going to have internet ice cream. And if you're a regular, you'll understand what that means and you'll also see loads of people posting about it underneath. Don't forget to share it to all your friends and all of that sort of stuff. Uh, and follow me on Instagram and Facebook and all of those crazy things that the uh, kids do. Yeah, maybe TikTok's next. Wow. <laughs> anyway, Tiny Tom. See, the phone call's completely put me off. Tiny Tom Logan, out. Ding. Love you, sis.